Right, I haven't been on YouTube uh, for a few weeks now because my um, father sadly passed away. He was a great father and had many different practical skills. He was a um, fully qualified um, cabinet maker, a qualified and skilled wood turner, a highly skilled carpenter and wood carver and a fully qualified teacher. He also served in the Royal Air Force and during his time of service he was affiliated to the United States Air Force. His trade in the Royal Air Force was an airframes fitter and he spent some of his time in the Middle East in Iraq. So like I say he was a highly skilled practical man and a great father. And before I go on I'd just like to show you one or two things that my father made. Um, this is a copy of a Mary Rose um, wooden tankard, drinking tankard. Um, he made this on his uh, wood turning lathe and made several of these. Um, this was made in September 2005 and it's Elmwood. This is one of his many carved items. This dog here is made out of holly. You can see all the lovely carving marks in that. Beautiful character and a real treasure. And I've shown this knife before in one of my other videos. Um, this is based on a British commando dagger. It's got a beautiful hollow ground blade. Um, I think the uh, wood handle here is made of um, either apple or pear wood. And lovely solid brass fittings. Complete with a sheath made of solid wood with a copper belt uh, loop. So like I said it's been a, a very sad time um, for all the family but we've got some great memories and some lovely things that he's left us. Now in this video I'd like to show you how you can make this high quality air rifle spring compressor. I made this many years ago but since my father left me this HW80 I have now converted it for use with this gun. And this spring compressor can be um, converted or adapted to use with many different um, air rifles which use a mainspring. And being made of um, solid aluminium, it's fairly low cost to make and easy to produce. And you'll see how easy it is to actually use this um, spring compressor. There's no need for any real explanation. If you have spring air rifles, you'll know exactly what it's for. The gun drops into the slot here at the front and this um, threaded part here screws down onto the end block. Also on the compression screw I've put this nylon bush or bearing. It's fixed to the end of the um, compression screw but can spin freely. It has an o-ring in the face of that one so that when it screws down on the air gun end block it won't slip. Uh, it prevents any damage to the block um, but it also allows the block to spin and prevents the um, thread from turning. And you obviously use that one to push the block in, compress the spring, and then you can start the thread off a few turns, take it out of the actual um, spring compressor, and then tighten up the block by hand. Two billets, which are 100 millimeter in diameter, um, 30 millimeter thick uh, just face off um, either side 
Um, this one, this end is threaded through for 10mm um, threaded studding. Um, the two bars here are one inch in diameter and 450 millimeter long and they've been threaded in each end to accept um, eight millimeter um, allen bolts so they are marked out equally both ends and basically screwed together and for the nylon um, bush or bearing I've bored it out at the back here so that it goes down over the thread um, then I've drilled through to accept a 2BA um, brass screw countersunk the end so that it's uh, below the surface obviously and that one screws on the face there of that um, threading and it bottoms out at a certain point to give enough end flow so that the um, bearing is able to turn like that there and you can see the um, o-ring there I put a face groove in the end of that and just pushed that one in um, leaving a certain portion of the o-ring protruding and I made the screw knob here on the end of the um, threading um, out of a piece of 50 uh, millimeter diameter aluminium all the aluminium I've used on this by the way is aircraft grade and um, I've nailed that and drilled right the way through in two places and that was tapped to obviously fit onto the um, studding and I've screwed it on there um, with a um, steel locking nut and then used the holes to tighten those against one another to stop it coming off and before I bolted it together I put several o-rings equally spaced on the diameter here of the aluminium to protect the um, gun finish and the hardest part um, to make is obviously the front end here with this slot in and I did this on the Myford um, lathe and I'll show you that set up and how I machine that now so this is the actual setup I use to mill the slot on this component I'm using a right angled cast iron um, fixture plate heavy duty it's got five slots on either side in which to bolt it to the Myford ML7 cross slide with T-nuts and then I put a allen bolt through one of the existing holes on the component and a clamp at the back here done up nice and tight and obviously positioned that one nice and square and moved it to allow for the actual depth of cut and then I've zeroed it on my um, saddle stop um, so that it's uh, zeroed on the front face here and then moved back on the adjustment by about 10 thou so it clears this face here by 10 thou
and then it's basically just advancing the saddle all the way um, small cuts uh, to mill that out when I come to the stop it will be 10 thou off of this face here when I take the component off there will be a 10 thou um, burr at the back and I can just file that off so you can see this is a very um, good fixture to have for the Myford ML7 or any other lathe um, which has slots on the um, cross slide um, like I said it's heavy duty and you can do nice large components like this so this is the last cut now And you can see the burr there and I just file that one off and put a bit of a chamfer on each of the corners and that one's finished.